Welcome to Crazy Nurse RN Hub, where learning becomes a tradition. Come, join me as we explore the multifaceted world of nursing. Hi there students, and welcome back to Crazy Nurse RN Hub, where learning becomes a tradition. In continuation to our discussion about cardiovascular system drugs, we have anti-anginal agents. First, let's have the different drug classifications under your anti-anginal agents. First, we have your nitrates, beta blockers, we also have your calcium channel blockers and your piperazine acetamide. First, let's discuss about coronary artery disease. It involves changes in the coronary vessels that promote atheromas or tumors which narrows the coronary arteries and decrease their elasticity and responsiveness to normal stimuli. So as what I have mentioned, there are two types or two ways of circulation. First is the systemic circulation wherein the heart pumps blood throughout the body. The second one is the heart pumps blood going to the coronary vessels of the heart to nourish the heart muscles. So in your coronary artery disease, coronary circulation is involved here. So, in your coronary artery disease, the problem here is there is a development of ateroma or a clot or a plaque on the coronary artery vessel that would block the blood flow going to the heart muscles, thus decreasing the amount of oxygen which will be received by that particular heart muscle cells. Now let's discuss about angina pectoris. It occurs when the narrowed vessels cannot accommodate the myocardial demand for oxygen. So we refer this as chest pain or chest discomfort. So this happens if there is a narrowed vessels due to plaque, clot, or atheromas that would inhibit the blood to reach that particular muscle cells. We also have your stable angina. It occurs when the heart muscle is perfused adequately except during exertion or increased demand. So in your stable angina, the patient experiences pain only upon exertion or increased demand. But if the patient is at rest, she would not experience chest pain or chest discom discomfort. So that is your stable angina. When we say unstable or pre-infarction angina, it means it occurs when the vessels are so narrow that the myocardial cells are, are deprived of sufficient oxygen even at rest. So this means that in your unstable or pre-infarction angina, even the patient is resting, she might experience chest pain or chest discomfort. Now let's have your Prince Metal Angina. It is a spasm of a coronary vessel that decreases the, the flow of blood through the narrowed lumen. So when we say there, when we note or when we observe that there is a spasm of the coronary vessels, it is your Prince Metal Angina. It is a medical condition in which there is temporary spasm of the coronary arteries causing pain and discomfort on the chest. We also have your myocardial infarction or commonly abbreviated as MI. It happens when a coronary vessel is completely occluded, the cells that deprive on the vessels for oxygen becomes ischemic, then necrotic, and die. So in your myocardial infarction, there is a complete blockage 
or complete occlusion of the blood vessels. Thus, the blood could not pass through that blood vessel. Thus, the heart muscles will not receive oxygen and it will become ischemic. Then, eventually, necrotic, then that particular heart muscles will die. Once the heart muscles will die, it could not function well. Thus, it decreases the effectivity or the pumping or the effectivity of pumping mechanism of that heart. Now, let's have your anti-anginal agents. So, it is used to help restore the appropriate supply and demand ratio in oxygen delivery to the myocardium when rest is not enough. So, it works in two ways. First, it dilates blood vessels, thus accommodating blood to flow freely on that artery. Also, it decreases the work of the heart. First drug classification under your anti-anginal medication is your nitrates. These are drugs that act directly on smooth muscle to cause relaxation and to depress muscle tone. So examples are amyl nitrate, isosorbib dinitrate or isordil, isosorbib mononitrate or monoket, and nitroglycerin. So these are the examples of your nitrates. And the main action of this is for relaxation and to depress the muscle tone of the heart. For the therapeutic action and indication, as what we have mentioned, it relaxes and dilates veins, arteries, and capillaries, allowing increased blood flow through the vessels and allowing systemic blood pressure because of a drop uh, and sorry and lowering systemic blood pressure because of a drop in resistance now let's have the contraindications and cautions so first we will not give this medication if the patient has an allergy severe anemia we also have head trauma or cerebral hemorrhage pregnancy lactation hepatic and renal disease we also have hypotension since it causes dilation of the blood vessels so we would not give this to patients with hypotension because it could further aggravate their condition. We also have hypovolemia or low blood volume and limited cardiac output since we are dilating the blood vessels so if the patient has a limited cardiac output, it would not completely fill that particular vessels, thus causing hypotension and maybe aggravating its condition to uh, resulting to shock. We also have your adverse effects. First, hypotension. Patient might experience headache. Patient might experience also dizziness tachycardia as compensatory mechanism since we are dilating and relaxing the blood vessels, rush, flushing, nausea, vomiting, sweating, and of course chest pain. So these are the adverse effects of your nitrates. Now let's proceed to beta-adrenergic blockers. It is used to block the, st the stimulatory effects of the sympathetic nervous system. Examples are atenolol or tenormin, metoprolol or toprol XL, propanolol inderal, danolol corgard. For the therapeutic effects and indications, we have it completely, uh, sorry, it competitively block beta adrenergic receptors in the heart and juxta glomerular apparatus in the kidney. Decreases the influence of sympathetic nervous system responses on tissues. 
So these are the therapeutic actions and indications of your beta-adrenergic blockers. For your contraindication and cautions, we have bradycardia, heart block, cardiogenic shock. We also have pregnancy, lactation, diabetes, peripheral vascular disease, we also have asthma, COPD, and tyrotoxicosis. So once you have noted this to your patients, you would not give these medications. Now let's proceed to the adverse effects. Dizziness. We also have your vertigo, heart failure, arrhythmias, gastric pain, flatulence, diarrhea. We also have vomiting impotence, and decreased exercise tolerance. So these are the adverse effects of your beta-adrenergic blockers. Now let's proceed to your calcium channel blockers. It inhibits the movement of calcium ions across the membranes of myocardial and arterial muscles. So examples are your amlodipine, Norvasc, Delchazem, Cardizem, Nicardipine, Cardem, Nifidipine, Adalat EC, and Verapamil, Calan. So these are the examples of your calcium channel blockers. For the therapeutic action and indications, it is indicated for treatment of Prince Metal Angina. Remember that your Prince Metal Angina is the uh, spasm of your coronary arteries. Also, it is indicated for chronic angina effort-associated angina, and hypertension. So basically, your calcium channel blocker main uh, function is to block the calcium ions. Remember that your calcium ions is responsible for uh, neuromuscular irritability. So once there is a blockage of that calcium channel, it would actually relaxes the heart and it would decrease the stimulation of your sympathetic nervous system responses. We also have your contraindications and causes and caution, sorry. Presence of allergy, pregnancy, we also have lactation, heart block, renal and hepatic dysfunction, and the heart failure. For the adverse effects, we have dizziness, lightheadedness, patient might experience headache and asthenia. Your asthenia is an extreme weakness. So that's the medical term for extreme weakness. Peripheral edema, bradycardia. We also have atrioventricular block, flushing, rush, and nausea. So these are the adverse effects of your calcium channel blockers. Now let's proceed to your piperazine acetamide agent. Example of this medication is ranolazine. It is the newest drug approved for treatment of angina. It prolongs the QT intervals and does not slow heart rate or decrease BB, BP. And, that, and it also decreases myocardial oxygen demand. So as you notice, this medication functions by decreasing the myocardial workload or demand of the heart. Now let's proceed to your lipid lowering agents or they call this as anti-lipidemics. -lipid, uh, okay. So let's now have the drug classifications under your lipid lowering agents. First, we have your bile acid sequestrants. H second is HMG CoA reductase inhibitors. Third, we have your cholesterol absorption inhibitor. Next, we have your fibrates, and we have your vitamin B B three, vitamin B three. And lastly, we have your omega three fatty acids. Now let's define first what is hyperlipidemia. It refers to an increase in the level of lipids in the blood. 
So remember when we say hyperlipidemia, hyper means increase, lipid means uh, fats, cholesterol, imia means blood. So once you see hyper, you could actually say that it's increased. When we say hypo, that means it's decreased. When we say imia, that is in reference to the blood. Okay? So it's very important to interpret or to know these medical terms by just looking at their prefix and suffix. We also have fats. It is taken into the body as dietary fats, then broke down in the stomach to fatty acids, lipids, and cholesterols. So I have here foods rich in fats. So we have your fatty meats and fish, cheese, butter, avocado, nuts and seeds, and chocolates. We also have your bile acids. It acts like detergents to break down or metabolize fats into smaller molecules. So these are also considered as emulsifiers. We also have your cholesterol, a fat that is used to make bile acids. It serves as a base for steroid hormones and cell membrane structures. So you would actually see this cholesterol on the cell membranes. We also have your HMG COA reductase. It is an enzyme that controls the early rate limiting step in the production of cellular cholesterol. So I would like to take I would like you to take note that once you see ACE at the end of the term, you could actually uh, note this that this is an enzyme. Okay. Uh, most of the enzyme ends on ACE at the end of their word. So you could easily identify these enzymes. Now let's proceed to the lipid lowering agents. So it lowers the serum level of your cholesterol and various lipids. First drug classification under this is your bile acid sequestrants. It is used to decrease plasma cholesterol levels. Examples are cholestyramine, cholestipol or cholestid, colesivilam or wellcol. So for the action and indication of this drug classification we have, it binds with bile acids in the intestine to form an insoluble complex that is then excreted in the feces. That means the fats that is being inject uh, the fats that are being inje uh, ingested by the patient will not be absorbed by the body because it will be converted in an insoluble complex on the intestine and eventually it will be eliminated to the body through defecation so that is how this bile sequestrants agents work we also have your contraindications and cautions for this medication. Of course, if you have presence of allergy, complete biliary obstruction, abnormal intestinal function, pregnancy, and lactation. For the adverse effects, we have rash, headache, anxiety, vertigo, dizziness, constipation, exacerbation of hemorrhoids, flatulence, nausea, increased bleeding tendencies, and vitamin A, D, and K deficiency. These are your fat-soluble vitamins. Since you will not be absorbing these fats to the body, so your vitamin A and vitamin, vitamin A, vitamin B, and vitamin K will not be utilized in the body since there is no available fats or adequate fats on the body and we also have your muscle and joint pains now let's proceed to your hmg 
CoA reductase inhibitors. Examples are your atorvastatin, Lipitor, Fluvastatin, Lescol, Luvastatin, Pitavastatin, Levalo, Pravastatin, Pravacol, Rosovastatin, Crestor, and Simvastatin, Zopor. So it's very easy for you to identify this drug classification because there is a statins at the end of their drug name. So this is so these are your HMG CoA reductase inhibitors. So the therapeutic action of your HMG CoA reductase inhibitors is it inhibits the early rate limiting steps in the synthesis of cellular cholesterol involved the enzyme HNGCO reductase. Serum cholesterol and LDL levels decrease. So that means this medication acts on inhibiting the formation or the synthesis of your fats. We also have contraindications and cautions for this. First, we have your, the presence of allergy. If the patient has active liver disease, alcohol, liver disease, pregnancy, lactation, and impaired endocrine functions. For the adverse effects, we have headache, flatulence, abdominal pain, cramps, constipation, rhabdomyolysis with acute renal failure. So for your rhabdomyolysis to happen, there is a torn muscle. Then it will be converted into myoglobin, and this myoglobin will enter the bloodstream. Then it will reach the kidneys. Then it will dis damage the function and structure of the kidney, leading to acute renal failure. And the most prominent assessment for this is a Coca-Cola urine. That means the urine of the patient looks like a Coca-Cola drink. Now let's proceed to your cholesterol absorption inhibitors. Example of this medication is ezetimibe or your Zetia. It is the first new class of drugs to lower cholesterol levels and it works in brush border of the small intestine to decrease the absorption of dietary cholesterol from the intestine. So the main function of this medication is it inhibits the absorption of cholesterol in the body. Now let's have your contraindications and cautions. First, presence of allergy, pregnancy, we also have lactation, severe liver disease. So these are the contraindications of this drug classification. Now for the adverse effects, we have patient might experience headache, dizziness, abdominal pain, diarrhea, upper respiratory infection, back pain, myalgia, and arthralgia. So the patient might experience muscle pain and joint pains. When we say myalgia, it's, it's a muscle. Then arthralgia, it means it's a joint. We also have your fibrates. Fibrate stimulates the breakdown of lipoproteins from the tissue and their removal from the plasma. We also have your vitamin B or vitamin B3, sorry, this is vitamin B3. It is known as niacin or nicotinic acid. It inhibits the release of free fatty acids from adipose tissue, thus lowering the lipid level in the body. Also, we have your omega-3 fatty acids. It inhibits the liver enzyme systems to decrease the synthesis of triglycerides, lowering the triglyceride levels, thus decreasing the cholesterol or lipids in the blood.